Amen. Amen. It's preaching time. Amen. Amen. If you would turn to the book of James, the very first chapter, beginning at verse 5. James 1, 5. Amen. Reading from the King James, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. I want to speak from the subject, you good until you're not good. You good until you're not good. Father, I pray you look me down to well. Leave me there until I'm done. You understand the matter of assignment way more than I do. Allow me to preach your word and let them become hearers of your word. He that hath an ear, let him hear what thus saith the Lord. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let me read it real quick in the New Living Translation. If you need wisdom... Ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. Everyone is good until they're not good. One of the things that we are infamous for is being good. <laughs> you all right? I'm good. And everything seems to go in our favor. Everything seems to go our way and we are good until we are not. So in this particular scripture, we find that there is a double-minded person Loyalty lies between two. We had a great discussion in Sunday school this morning as it relates to understanding our relationship with God and walking with God and before God and making sure that whatever we do, God is pleased with. If God is pleased with what we do, then we know that everything else will fall in order. We like to sit there and say that we're good with the Lord, but yet we don't want to follow. Verse 5 says, if you need wisdom, ask, because God is generous to give it. It's no secret. It's not something that needs to be hidden. God wants you to have wisdom. He wants us to seek wisdom so that we can make good decisions. I'm, I'm, I was coming to, to the church this morning, and, you know, my car is out of commission right now because it has some kind of power. Uh, the, the computer is not working. So my power management system is off, you know, and it comes on. And I was driving, and, and all of a sudden the lights went blinking and everything went dark, and then it reappeared. I'm glad the car itself didn't stop. I've been on a car. My Cadillac was going 70 miles an hour when it just decided to cut itself off in the middle of the highway. But then God said, no, not yet. You got to understand that God is in control of everything. 
And so I'm driving or riding up this morning, which was a pleasure, by the way, <laughs> being driven <laughs> in the passenger seat. I enjoyed that, that for a, a quick moment anyway. And while we were driving, we saw a squirrel dart out into the street. And then the squirrel became indecisive. Had the squirrel had a kept on track, he'd still be alive today. <laughs> but he became indecisive. We're trying to figure out, should I go on or go back? Why? Because he could sense and see that there was danger. Wow. And so, unfortunately, his indecision left to his demise. Now, I can see that because I'm on the outside looking in. I can see that if he keeps going, he's good. But if he stops, he's through. Well, people of God, your indecision is the reason why you're failing. Because you won't see it through. Because things happen around you that that scare you. There's a danger alert sign that's on. But wisdom would have said, just keep moving and you're going to be all right. But sometimes when you get indecisive in your life is when the enemy gets the chance to catch up to you. See, that's one of the things that we don't, we don't, we don't understand. And so what we do is we like to play both sides of this here track, right? We want to follow God, but we don't want all of the accountability that comes with following God. Why? Because it may alienate us from this world, but we are not of this world. At least if you understand the scriptures, if you understand that the reason why you are born again, the reason why you are the hand picked of God is because we are supposed to be the light unto this world but because of our indecisiveness and wanting to follow God or follow man we, we, we get ourselves in trouble because we want to align ourselves up with things we can see versus things that we cannot I don't know what God is going to do on the other side well you never know if you don't get there but when you keep teeter tottering back and forth between should I be righteous or am I unrighteous should I do wrong or should I do right? Am I good or am I bad? Am I saved or am I unsaved? Because we even challenge ourselves based upon our behavior. We question our own salvation. Am I really saved? Am I saved this time? I thought I was saved a thousand times before. But I don't know. And the reason why we don't know is because we keep teeter-totting. We have divided loyalty, y'all. We aren't truly following God except for when it's convenient to us. But what about when it's not convenient? When you can't go to the function. When you can't be a part of the group. When you got to separate yourself from the crowd. But you don't want to. Because I'm going to miss out. I'm going to miss out on something. Really? What does this world have to offer? So much so that we're willing to give everything for it and not get nothing in return. Tell me what this world owes us, what this world will give us, what this world will profit us. What does it profit a man to gain the whole and lose his? So why do we keep chasing this world? Why do we keep having divided loyalty between the one who loved us and the one who could care less? That's a decision that we all have to make. But our indecision is what's killing us. Because we won't stick to the plan. What is the plan, you ask? This word of God. It makes the plan clear. Look, look at what it says. If you need wisdom, just ask. I'll give it to you. If you don't need to go there and you say, well, you know, I, I, I don't know. I seem like to me that's not where God would want me. Well, let me help you out real quick with wisdom. The fact that you question yourself 
about going somewhere that you don't understand or know is your answer before God even gives it to you. You say, just listen to what you said. Because if you got to ask about, is God pleased with this? You already know he's not. And the longer you sit there before whatever it is you're about to do, the more you convince yourself that you're doing it because God has put you in this position. Or there are those who say, well, you know, Satan made me do it. Let me help you out real quick. <laughs> Satan don't have a dog in the fight. Because if you're somebody who ain't reading his word, ain't against his kingdom, I can promise you Satan ain't nowhere near you. Now you got a little demon that hang with you. Because that's all you need. Don't take much, right? A little demon to throw you off whatever it is your love, what you care for. Little alcohol, little drugs, little women, little wine, little, little gambling, little this, little that. You don't need no Satan on your trail. A little demon to take care of everything. Why? Because you straddle the fence well. Because you want to look like a Christian. You want to smell like a Christian. You want to think like a Christian. But everything you do go against his will. But he said, I'll give you the wisdom if you ask. He said, but then here comes six. But when you ask me, when you ask, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Well, wait a minute. You mean I just can't ask you? Well, no. Because if your faith isn't in him, the question is, what are you asking for? And if you're asking outside of your faith in him, is that something God wants you to have? No. So we can't sit there and say, well, Lord, I ask for everything. They say you have not because you ask not. Well, I'm asking, but you ain't asking in the faith. You're trying to ask for these blessings while you continue to hang with the crew. You want to be blessed. You don't want to understand what's going on in your life, but yet you want to be with everybody else, even though everybody else ain't following the same Jesus that you following. But you're good until you're not good. See, we can hang on to this thing called faith walk and think that we're doing it the way God wants us to do it when we know we're not because can I ask you a question how many folks are walking in faith and yet don't read his word how many people are walking in faith and don't spend time praying and talking to the father how many people who are in faith make sure that they give God the glory before they even walk out their door but yet we want stuff from God we want him to hear our cry. We want jobs. We want wives. We want husbands. We want our children to be well. We want our churches to be great. We want all these things, but yet we don't do the simplest thing as even kneeling before we go out into this world because we feel like that's just what we do. You know, you sit there and you expect your lungs to inhale and exhale, don't you? You do. You don't think about it. You can breathe and nobody got to tell you. Because stop breathing and see what happens. So you do it without thinking. But when it comes to God, we thinking, <laughs> oh man, I got to read how many passages? I got to pray how long? I got to fast for a period of time if I want God to move in my direction. I got to give up stuff I got to do. Oh, it's such a chore, isn't it? The God that we serve, the God that we love, the God that we expect some stuff from, but yet when he expects stuff from us, we ain't willing to give it. Why? Because it's not conducive to our behavior or the way we want to go. We want to do what we want to do because that's what we want to do. It's all good, Holmes. God knows. He understands. You know, we cool. We got that communication. He my homie. You know, you know we, we get this thing where we get so personal with God as if God is irrelevant. That's my friend. That's my dog. That's my road dog. One of the things I hate more than anybody, and, like, and it's just me. I said, hey, I'm saying me. I hate. I hate when folks say that God showed out. Because my God don't show out. When you show out, it means you acting a fool about something. Well, God don't act no fool. 
but he shows up. There's a difference, but that's my relation with him. So for me, it bothers me when I hear folks, especially believers, say, God, come on and show out. I'm like, no, I'm not, not my God. My God is in control. My God loves order. My God ain't about to show out, but he'll show up all over the place. But that's a relationship thing, right? And so we're sitting there and we want God to bless us. And yet we're not doing anything to bless the kingdom. We're not doing anything to get our minds and our mindset to be a blessing of the kingdom, from the kingdom, to the kingdom, so that others around us would have that same blessing bestowed upon them. That's when you ask for wisdom. When you ask for wisdom, it means you can't keep acting foolish. That's why ain't nobody acting for wisdom. Because if you ask for wisdom, how can you straddle the fence? Because wisdom will say you can't serve two gods. You can't have two masters. Either you love one or you hate the other or vice versa, but you cannot be in betwixt because it makes you indecisive and an indecisive believer is dead. Because you have no value. Because you're not sure. So when it says that you must be, you must have the faith in God alone. It says once you have that, if you got all that that you need in God, then the Bible comes back and says, now that you understand that, do not waver. That squirrel wavered. It was a sad and tragic thing. I had to make that dramatic. But that's how some of our lives are. A sad and tragic thing because God has more for us, but we keep going in between because we're indecisive about will I walk for God or it's like when we're trying to lose weight. You see, I, I can talk about that because I know that real well. All right, look, this is the last Sunday I'm doing desserts and then I'm going to start exercising. And then Monday come around. Well, you know, Tuesday ain't that bad either. Day and stuff because something comes up that wasn't supposed to come up. And so since it came up, you figure, let me make an adjustment. God knows he understands. But you're indecisive and you're indecisive can lead to high blood pressure, high cholesterol and everything else that you don't need. But because you don't. You're not sure. Okay, I want to give that up, so let me keep going this way. But soon as that big old chocolate piece of cake come across your face, all of a sudden you start teeter-tottering. Because you want to give your flesh what it wants. Wisdom would say, walk away. Doesn't the Bible say flee temptation? I don't see nowhere where it says run to it. Because what the word knows is temptation will take you under. Why? Because all you got to do is see it. Once you see it, then you imagine it. That, that cake look nice. I sure can. I, matter of fact, let me. <laughs> I'm not eating sweets right now, right? And my wife made these cinnamon buns. And those cinnamon buns are sitting in the corner, you know, and Jaron, he can eat them, you know, but they are pretty good. So I had some before I stopped eating my desserts. I had to get everything out of my system by the end of September. <laughs> and now I'm going, I'm going to Philly this weekend to celebrate my wife's birthday. And she said, well, you know, you can't have desserts. I said, yeah, I know. I know. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Until I'm not good. When am I not good? When I get there and I see all this stuff in my face, I'm like, man, God almighty, I need your strength and energy. But that's the stuff that flips us because we teeter tot like we want to be healthy, but then we don't. We want to do right, but then we don't. Why? Because it feels good to do the stuff that damages us and hurt us versus doing the things that will uplift us and build us and allow us to grow because all we see is the immediate, the immediate satisfaction of me eating that piece of chocolate cake has no, I, it has no value whatsoever to my health, does it? That squirrel being indecisive had no value to his health. That car didn't care nothing about that squirrel. That car didn't slow down. That car didn't beep. That car was doing what 
it was supposed to do, drive. The squirrel had to make a decision either to keep going, and he was good. I was sitting looking, I was like, man, don't go back, don't go back. And that's what your mom and daddy be telling you when they praying over y'all. Don't go back. Don't go. go. Keep going forward, son. Keep going forward, my daughter. Don't go back. Don't Because we watch them. Why? Because we on the outside. We can see. I can see when you are about to explode. I can see the trouble that's coming because you can't see it. It's like when we tell somebody, now you shouldn't marry that man. You say, but you just hating. I ain't hating. I see. See, you so into it that you can't see. That squirrel was so into his tight spot, he couldn't see that if he kept going, he would have made it. All he knew was his danger was there. And since danger was there, his only inclination was to do what? Go back. But she was already there. One more blue scoot of the legs, tower would have went past you. My wife saw you. She was already like, oh, no. And I looked at my wife and I said, that'll preach. <laughs> but that's us. We can do it, but we're indecisive. We want to play in the road, and then we don't want to play in the road. We want to play with danger, then we don't want to play with danger. Do we want to ask God to bless my dangerous situations? What? Well, Lord, you know I'm about to go into it. Why? I can't help myself. Danger feels so good. It's so right. I ain't going to take the other situation I was in. It was dangerous. But I could have been killed in the situation that I was in. And, and, and it's a rush. It's a high, right? Because you're sitting there, you playing with it. And God was like, why in the world would a child of God find itself in this situation? Where you can die simply because of your indecision. Like where you are, you have no business being. Why? Because you're supposed to be following me. If you're following me, you won't find yourself where you have no business being. Then that don't even become a story in your life. But sometimes God puts you in a situation that will allow you to see his glory. And then you have a chance to reconcile that with your relationship with him. Because then you begin to think, okay, I could have been here, but by the grace of God, I'm not. And so since I recognize what God has done for me, that builds up my faith and my relationship with him to know that he's a keeper. He's a provider. And, 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 and so he allows me to see those things so that I can become stronger and not weaker. So you got to understand that sometimes those toss and those turns and those indecisions is simply because I'm not following God, but then God keeps me through my indecisiveness because he wants me to get somewhere. He told the disciples that Satan has a desire to sift you like wheat. Now, when you come through on the other side, I need you to strengthen your brothers. Had the squirrel made it, he could have went and told, hey, man, don't fool with them cars no more. If he had sense. We fool around with no sense, get bailed out by God, and then still have no sense. Because we have not recognized that it's God that kept us. We want to say, oh, we lucky. <laughs> oh, that was a close one. How about God has allowed you to make it through so that you can see something so that you don't keep going down the same road again, that's wisdom. That's understanding. So now when I ask God, I'm going to ask God in faith because I know he's a keeper. I know he's a provider. I know he can take me through. So now I don't just have to say I'm good. I know I'm good. Why? Because I'm good in him. Because without him, I'm not good, y'all. As much as I want to keep saying myself, I'm a believer, I pay my tithes, I go to church, and I can do whatever I want, I'm good until you're not good. But when will your to not good come? It's when you're in a crisis moment. When you're in a crisis moment, 
The Bible says, do not wait for a person which the vibe of loyalty is unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world. And they are unstable in everything they do. King James say they are double-minded and unstable in all his ways. We need some stability. And God can provide the stability. We got to get out the way. We got to walk this walk. We got to let the light shine. Why? Because we are kingdom builders. That's our assignment. That's why Romans 12 is so important. Every one of our lives matter. To who? Those around us. Why in the world would I follow a believer if that believer is unsteady, wavers, hypocritical, doesn't read his word, doesn't do these things, don't go out in, in places where they belong, but yet they right there in church on Sunday morning. Which is kind of funny, right? Because you're supposed to be here, but I've told y'all before in a certain way that what good is it to pull up to the gas station and not get no gas? All you do is leave on an empty tank. And then when you get half your way home, your car runs out. And then you say, mm, I forgot to get the gas. How can you come to church and don't fill up? So that you can battle the things of this world. I know we work in some hellish places. I know the TV is a hellish hole. The things we allow and music to come through our ears. The things our eyes are able to see. The environments that we live in. All of these things are blinders to us. If we don't understand the God that we serve. That's why you got to understand that your purpose has to be bigger than your circumstances. Because that's the only way you can see through your circumstances. But if your purpose ain't strong, if you ain't strong, if your walk ain't strong, if your faith ain't strong, if your relationship with the Lord is not strong, then every one of your circumstances will bring you down and you will become indecisive. And your, and your indecision leads to a broken believer. And you can't help nobody along this journey. Ain't nothing worse than a whiny Christian. Everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> the Lord, he done left me out here. I can't pay my rent. I can't pay my mortgage. I can't pay my house. Well, maybe you don't need none of them things. Because you ain't a good steward of what God can. You understand there's always a reason, right? But we want to blame everybody or blame God. Want to read. Well, Lord, you said you would provide. Yeah, but look at what you're doing with your resources. Everything else is more important than what's important. But no, you got a nice home? I'm good. You got a nice car? I'm good. You got a nice job? I'm good. All of a sudden, the home, the job, the car is gone. Now, all of a sudden, I'm not good. I thought you was good. You was good because everything was going your way. Everything was in your favor. Wasn't Job? Job was good. Until everything won. The difference was when it won, Job realized, hey, he giveth and he taketh away. We lose it and we like, Lord, why hast thou forsaken me? <laughs> but yet your lifestyle don't show nothing that you belong to him. 
If it wasn't not for the fact that you accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior because you had enough sense to do that, you would be really like that squirrel. But because of Jesus, you get another opportunity. But you got to learn from it. You got to respond to the challenges that God lays before you to get you stronger, to get those around you stronger, to get your church stronger, to get your family stronger, to get the people that you work with stronger, to get your employment stronger. Everything around you should be increasing and not decreasing. If everything around you is decreasing, it's because you are double minded. And you ain't good. And so now all of a sudden, everything that you said looks like it was a lie. Because you said you was good. But now everything go upside down. I'm not good. The difference between a believer and a non-believer is a believer is always good. Even when things aren't going well, they good. Why? Because they got a relationship with God. They don't teeter-totter and they don't waver. Lord, I know you know this situation. I know you see what I'm going through. I know the enemy think he has me. I know it seems like the whole world is crumbling around me, but I know a sovereign God. I know a God that owns a cattle on a thousand hills. I know the same God that wakes me up every morning and lays me down at night. I know the God that will move in and out of my life, have me in places and positions that I had no idea I would be in. And when I got there, I was able to flourish and to stand up and shine because that's the God that I know. I understand that Jesus Christ, who had the whole world caving in on him and had an opportunity. They said, oh, you ain't going to say nothing to me? Pilate said, I got the power. He said, Jesus, and I, you ain't got no power over me other than that which I give you. How many folks are going to let power that they have be given to somebody else when they got the power to shut somebody down? But when you understand who Jesus is and what he's done for us, how in the world can you still be teeter-tottering on hanging with this world that will soon pass away? Jesus had everything at his feet and he gave it all up for you and me. And so now he asks us to do the same thing because of your destination. Where are you going? When you leave here, where are you going? Because that's where the hope comes in. Jesus died for our sins. But early, on a Sunday morning, he got up with all power. Because Satan said, I'm good. Till Jesus got up, I'm not good. You got to decide in your life. Are you good, good? Are you good until you're not good? Because if you're good until you're not good, you're on the wrong side. But if you're good, no matter what's going on, and you're still good, then you're good. That's why Jesus got up. So we could be good. In season and out of season. Through trials, tribulations, and triumphs, we're still good. Because my life is in his hands. That's it. I ain't got nothing else to worry about. And so when I go before him, yes, I need his wisdom to navigate this world. Yes, I need to have my faith grow stronger. And he's taking me through different things to show me that I can trust in him. And then I can't waver when I talk to him. And I say, Lord, I got a situation I need you to deliver me from. And whatever you decide, I'm good. So if you got this diagnosis for an illness or whatever the case may be, or you about to lose your job, whatever it is, does God still have you? So if he knows where you're going before you get there, y'all know I just said it a thousand times. 
then chill out. Relax. Stop worrying about stuff you can't control. Because if you could control, wouldn't you fix it? But if you have not fixed it yet, guess what? <laughs> you can't control it. Put it in God's hands. Stop straddling the fence. Walk with him. Talk with him. Sing with him. Laugh with him. Cry with him. Whatever it is you need to do, use him. That's why he got up with all power. We have access to God the Father through Jesus the Son. Nobody else on this world has that same access without knowing Jesus as Savior. And I don't even have to say that I'm not sure, but I'm 100% sure. Because how did you get to a holy God when you were a mess? If it was not for the blood of Jesus. Amen? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So, in closing, I'm good. Till I'm not. The doors of the church are open this morning. <laughs>